Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to the BFS Fishing Channel. And in this video, we're gonna be taking a closer look and unboxing this right here. So this monstrosity is a new reel that's being brought to us by a company called Lungz or Longz. I'm not really sure how to pronounce it, but it's spelled L-O-O-N-G-Z-E. And uh, they are kind of, they're known for this, uh, this round reel that they just brought out and have been kind of spamming everywhere. But uh, enough of you guys were curious enough that uh, I did go out and order one. This was not given to me free for review. This I, I had to purchase this. It was given to me at a discounted price though. So I'm gonna go ahead and put up the paid partnership, but it is not a sponsored review. So yeah, just take that for what it is. Anyways, the, the claim to fame of this reel is that this reel is completely CNC'd and it's a little bit different from a reel like the tender shoot because the tender shoot is actually a CNC'd outer frame over a carbon body. So they had to do that to kind of reach that um, price point that, they, uh, that they're selling the tender shoot at. But this reel is fully CNC'd. And um, yeah, I, I wanna go, go ahead and apologize because I am sick again. Yeah, I got sick again after I got sick the first time. Just been getting hit by illness after illness this season. Yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at this. So the reel was packaged fairly well. I'm not really sure what's going on with this last piece of tape. When you do order this reel, as of right now, Seems like you can order it from one of two places. One is through Dankung, which their price for this reel is quite high. Or you can order it through the actual company themselves. And I, the list price on this reel is actually a whopping $269. So we're gonna answer the question whether or not this reel is actually worth it. Now, I don't know if you guys can see, maybe at that angle you can, but uh, it's got some specs on here, so let's take a look. So we've got, the name is the Uranus. So that's, uh, yeah, that's the, the name that they're going with right now. I've heard that they're gonna change the name uh, kind of for obvious reasons, but the model specific name is the B101 Air, and this is the HG version. It's, uh, the real frame is coming in at 169 grams. It's a 7.1 to one gear ratio. They report 3.8 kilograms of drag. I believe 75 CM is supposed to be the, uh, the CMPT or the IPT. Uh, they're reporting 12 plus one ball bearings and they recommend you use 0.6 go and you're gonna get about 100 meters of that uh, PE line on there. But let me show you the rest of the box. Here are all four sides, pretty plain pretty standard, nothing out of the ordinary or unusual. So let's go ahead and open this up. This is the first time I'm opening this reel. I always do these kind of live and, you know, unscripted. That way I'm not, uh, I'm being as honest as possible, I guess, about everything. Okay, so you get like a little QC card. Don't really care about that. And then a technical manual in Chinese, which doesn't really do me much good, so I'll have to go to my wife uh, and ask about that. I guess there's a little explanation on how to use the braking system. And so we'll talk about the braking system because that's a little bit unique to this reel. But uh, let's go ahead and open everything up and take a look. And so, maybe I opened it up the wrong way. <laughs> but, um, Wow, okay, so what else do you get? All right, so let's go ahead and set the box aside because I don't think there's anything else in the box. And um, let me take a pair of scissors to that. All right, so first impressions. Wow, this thing is tiny. You know, just by, from all the, the photos and, and whatnot, uh, it makes it really look like it's a very large reel, but you know, let me see if I can get another reel to compare this to. So here's another very popular round reel, the tender shoot. And as you can see, this one actually, <laughs> it actually looks a lot smaller. I think it has to do with this, this side plate here, but also the main big difference that I notice is the weight. 
this one feels extremely heavy. I mean, this is coming in at like 210 grams. This they report at 139 grams. So let's actually go ahead and and uh, weigh that real quick. So hopefully, hopefully you guys can see this. I'll put it right there, and everything is teared off. So 140.1 grams, that's what the olive weight is coming in at. And so they're off by one gram, but that's okay. That is that is pretty impressive. 140 grams, that's you know, that's pretty similar to what you would see in like a a low profile reel, a graphite or carbon framed low profile reel. So I will say that the retrieve does feel very smooth. There's a little bit of resistance to it, and it's kind of unique to this reel like i don't think i've ever felt resistance quite like that before the uh the brake dial very easy to turn not super easy where it's like you're gonna slip and you know make it turn on accident but yeah yeah it felt like it got caught for a second there on one of the settings but okay um what else can we check out let me see if we can do Huh. Okay, so the uh, spool, I'm checking out the um, free spool on this. Hmm, not the best. <laughs> not the best on this one. Excuse me, I almost coughed there. But let's check out the spool. And okay, so this is where the braking system is kind of unique. So from what I understand, the braking system on this, it uses an inductor cup similar to what you see in, on Daiwa's. And similar to what you see on Daiwa's, this inductor cup is dynamic. However, what you can actually do is there are a couple settings where you can make it so that this inductor cup actually becomes a fixed inductor cup at the furthest setting away from the brake assembly, meaning, instead of having your inductor cup travel inwards towards the uh, the brake magnets, you would actually be kind of arresting the inductor cup from moving at all. So it would have the weakest braking effect, which is kind of a neat idea. Um, obviously you see, yeah, you can see how it, it wants to move like that. Maybe not the, uh, the best cam action that I've ever seen, but uh, yeah, very unique. And then over on this side, let's go ahead and put the brakes to max so we can check out the magnets and all their glory. Um, so it does kind of remind me of a, like an FTB style. I don't know if you guys can see how like the, the magnet shoes are there, um, but they don't actually, they're not dynamic. So where you see, um, dynamic brake shoes like this that work together with an inductor cup are in the uh, the Hybo and the Arc braking systems. Yeah, so there's not really too much special going on with this side, but um, in terms of the, uh, the braking assembly, but let me take a look at the rest of this reel and the CNC work. So it looks like there's some, I don't know if that's anodization, anodizing, some anodizing issues there, but uh, you know, that's not too bad. I do like that uh, there are, you know, nice little ribs to kind of reinforce the structure. The aluminum feels thin and light, but not super light and not to the point where, you know, too much force will be needed to kind of bend anything like I, I don't feel like I would dent this I'd probably scratch this more than I would end up denting it in any situation uh, unless I like throwing the uh the reel on the ground or anything like that and let me see if I can yeah okay so this is going to be I don't know what their settings are numbered but uh, this is going to be the full travel of the uh the dynamic inductor so you're going from a position like this to a position like that right so that's how much travel you get. And then if you set the um, cup setting to the, 
to the most frozen one. And <laughs> I can see this being kind of an issue in that it's hard to tell which way you're supposed to go. I guess, uh, maybe not. Okay. So if you look in here, there's a little tiny, almost like a tab. And then there's a little bit of, uh, there's like a couple gear teeth. And so you just push using these three tabs on the outside. If you put your nail there and you can like kind of push over the inner um, tab on those little gear teeth. And so that's how you set the settings. It's not the easiest and it's not the most intuitive, but it works. And um, yeah, on mine, it works fairly easily. I feel like that maybe over time, those plastic gears might wear down. And if they do wear down, then you're kind of, I don't know what happens at that point, but you're kind of left out. Um, you're left with a reel that, a spool that might be stuck in the dynamic setting only. Um, okay, so one thing that uh, I saw in early photos was that this is a threaded side plate. And so I kind of had some reservations about threaded side plates. I, I really don't like them because they're it's just like another point where you can cross thread. But um, the threads feel very large and coarse. And so I don't think that cross threading will be a big issue. So you just loosely put it on and then, you know, tighten as needed. And then they do have little arrows here. I don't know if you can see that, that show you when you're tight enough. And so that would be the max tight tightness. Okay, so let's get some sounds because I've just been rambling on. Um, so here are, here is the star drag. And then here is the drag clicker. And then here is at the spool tension knob. And yeah, that's going to be it for all the sounds. Let me see if I can't get the free spool. No, I'm okay. I'm break five. Yeah, so not the not the best free spool in the world. Yeah, I mean, so far I'm pretty pretty impressed by the machining. Actually, it's not perfect, but it's pretty darn good for everything that I've seen coming out of you know China. And the fact that it's so light and so small uh, that's pretty impressive in and of itself. The gears do feel smooth. Um, and surprisingly, the aluminum knobs are not too bad. I still don't really like this really thin design, uh, but it's it feels better than some of the other, you know, pencil, or I don't know what you want to call these style handle knobs, but it feels better than like what you would uh, see on the high bow rise air. Um, the clutch button feels like there's a pretty good amount of resistance. I wish that was a little bit lighter. But yeah, it does look like a pretty solid reel. I don't know if it's worth uh, 269, like what the company is asking. I think that's something that you guys will definitely have to choose and make up your mind about. But this is kind of nice that they provide you with a very lightweight, and it looks like it's a CNC'd uh, spanner wrench. And I think that that would go for your for removing the handle. I do see some surface imperfections here where I think the anodizing got scratched off or maybe it just wasn't uniform enough uh, overall it is a very pretty reel whether or not it's worth the 269 uh, we'll have to come back and, and take a look because I'll be tearing the reel down and I'll also be getting a chance to uh, test it out and use it and so you guys let me know what do you guys want to see me do with this reel um, you know whether or not this reel is worth that uh, asking price that the company wants is uh, purely up to you guys. Are you interested in this reel? Are you interested in other reels that this company might bring out? I'm, I'm just as curious to hear what you guys think. You guys are the reason why I actually 
went out and purchased this reel to take a look at. But uh, I think that's going to do it for this video, guys. If you like the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, you can go ahead and give it a thumbs down. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing. It really helps the channel grow. And uh, with that being said, thank you so much for watching. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.